Hi, this is Miranda Wright, and this is day 61 of our 120-day Upper Room prayer campaign. And today we're going to pray, God, make us a witness. God has called each and every one of us to be a witness to others. And today I'm going to explain to you exactly how it is that we can witness effectively to the loss. All right, tonight's lesson is about how to be a witness. So... How do we effectively, let me put this mic down. How do we effectively witness to others about Jesus? We don't have this thing, so if you want, you can turn to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. We're not going to have many passages tonight because the Holy Spirit kind of directed me to do something. But in Acts 1, verses 8 and 9, we read, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay, this was Jesus speaking. This was after the crucifixion. This was whenever he came back, and after the resurrection, he had come back. Um, he's talking to his disciples, and he's actually about to leave to go into, the, into heaven, ascend up into the Father. This is the last thing that he speaks to his followers before he leaves. He says, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you that you shall be witnesses. Now, for those who were here last week, um, we talked about how grace and the Holy Spirit are basically the same thing. That when you are saved by grace, you receive the Holy Spirit, which then empowers you to be a witness. You receive that power through the Holy Spirit to be able to go out and witness to others. Now, to be a witness, all you really have to do is tell other people what God has done for you. It's really, really not that complicated. What thing we have to remember is that when we read the Bible and we read the New Testament and we read all of these accounts of these apostles and these great moves and revivals and moves of God, these people did not have the Bible because their lives were becoming the Bible. When we read the Bible, we're reading their testimony. So they were actually just going around telling people what God had done for them. They didn't have a Bible, but God still moved and people got saved because there's power in your testimony. So you don't have to have this deep theological understanding of scripture to actually lead people to Jesus. You just have to tell them what Jesus did for you. You give them your testimony. They didn't have a Bible, okay? They had their testimonies and they had Jesus' testimony. They told people what Jesus had done on the cross through the crucifixion that he had died to take away the sins of the world that his blood atones for our sins and then he they told people what happened to them when they believed and that's what stirred the, their faith stirred faith in others faith stirs faith so one validates the other the testimony of jesus is what saves us but your testimony is what validates the power of the blood of Jesus. Because when you tell somebody about the blood of Jesus, it makes no sense. But when you tell them how when you chose to believe, even though it made no sense, this is what happened to you, then that testimony validates the testimony of Jesus. So it takes both working together to really be effective. I think a lot of times we, we think we can tell them about Jesus and then we have to make it all make sense and come so deep in the scriptures and just tell them your story. That's all you really need. And I think a lot of times we come Wednesday nights, Sunday school, these things are great. It's good to know the word. We talk about eat the word, consume the word, dig into the word, grow in the word, know the word. We want to dig deeper, but we also want to remember the balance that it's not about what you know that really is going to make the difference. It's really who you know. And you can explain the Bible to somebody all day long. If they don't see a demonstration of that truth, they're not going to believe it. And you are the demonstration. Your story, because they know you. They don't know those people in that story. They know you. You prove the story true. In Acts chapter 26, verse 8, we see 
that this is why Paul was so effective. This is all Paul did. Again, they had the Old Testament, but they did not have the New Testament. All they had was their testimony. And we see here an example of the way that Paul ministered to bring the reality of the redemptive power of the blood of Jesus to life to people by giving his testimony. In Acts, 2, uh, Acts 26, verse 8 through 18, he says, Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Notice how he starts that. Why is it so hard to believe that God could raise Jesus from the dead? Let me tell you what he did for me. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. In other words, I used to work against the name of Jesus. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. Of course, we know Paul was employed by the priest to arrest Christians, to put them in jail, to have them crucified, all these things. He was a bounty hunter against Christians. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. He gave testimony against them to have them put to death. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them with bla to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities, whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests at midday O king I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me and when we were all fallen to the earth I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue Saul Saul why persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. So being a witness is part of the power that turns people from Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Faith stirs faith. Paul was giving his testimony. What happened in his life proved the power of God's grace. And of course, you don't have to go there. In Romans 8, 10, it says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not unto the flesh to live after the flesh. And it goes on and on. Basically, the point he's making here is that if the same power that raised Jesus from the dead really lives in you, then you're going to see it in that life. And you're going to see who you were, that dead person who was dead, you know, caught up in sin and with no life in you. And you're changed. You're brought into the newness of life. That's going to shine forth. The light of God is going to shine forth from you, through you, and it's going to prove that that power is real. That's why in the other passage, he started it off by saying, is it really hard to believe that God can raise somebody from the dead? Look how he raised me from the dead. It's harder to change a living person than to raise a dead body, but God can do it. Paul witnessed of what Christ had done, not only what Christ had done on the cross, but what Christ had done in him. And this is what we need. So to be able to lead people to Christ, to be able to overpower the power of Satan in people's life, we dig deep in scripture and that is good. We don't take away from that. But I am telling you, all you really need to be effective is to know what Jesus did on Calvary, 
and to tell people what he did for you because one validates the other. That's why in Revelations 12, 10, and this is the last passage I'm going to cover tonight, but in Revelations 12, 10, it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night, and they overcame him. How? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. In this one passage tells you how Christians overcome Satan. One, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, the atoning power of Jesus' blood. Two, by the word of their testimony, because your testimony proves the power of that blood. And because they didn't care about themselves. They loved not their lives even unto the death. In other words, they were willing to give that testimony. No matter who laughed at them, no matter who cursed them out, no matter who talked down about them, or no matter who threatened their life, imprisoned them, persecuted them, it all comes down to the power of what Jesus did and your willingness to tell people how that has affected you, no matter the cost. That's what overcomes Satan. That's it. We can spend all night going deep into scripture, but ultimately that is the only thing that's going to make a difference and bring somebody else to Jesus. They've got to see the demonstration of that truth in you. That's how faith stirs faith. You released faith when you chose to believe and that affected your life. Now you share that faith with somebody else and that stirs their faith. Then they choose to believe and they see how it affects their life and it spreads out and out and out and out. That's really all you need. Your salvation is your resurrection story. Jesus' testimony was his resurrection story. Your salvation is your resurrection story. Tell them Jesus' resurrection story. Tell them your resurrection story. They decide, I want to be resurrected too. It's that simple. So you don't need, to know enough, don't need to know a lot about the Bible to bring someone to Jesus. You just need to know Jesus. That's why it's more about who you know, because it goes back to Jesus. Remember, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Do you know Jesus? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you have that power that raised Christ from the dead? Because that's what he said. If you have the same power that raised Christ from the dead living in your mortal body, then you're going to be, actually, Jesus said, these things that I do, you're going to do greater I go to the Father and I send to you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals all truth. He shows you what to do. You don't have to worry about it. You just go and you be a witness to everybody you can. Why? Because that's the power that overcomes Satan and brings people into the truth. So now we have to understand one thing before we move on to the next segment of what we're going to do tonight. Your testimony, first of all, we got to remember, your testimony is not about what you did for God. It's about what God did for you. A lot of times you'll see, you'll open the floor for testimonies, and people will sometimes take it as an opportunity to talk about what they've done this week, and that's not a testimony. If it's about what you did, then that's not a testimony. It's bragging. And God kind of told me like this, if... What you're talking about, if you're talking about what somebody else did, you're gossiping. If you're talking about what you did, you're bragging. If you're talking about what Jesus did, you're testifying. So we have to always remember that it's about what Jesus did, not what we did. And another thing we have to take into account, too, is that every testimony matters because every encounter matters and different people will relate to different testimonies don't assume because sometimes we'll hear this huge great testimony I mean we just heard Paul's right and then the devil will get in your ear and be like well mine doesn't amount to a whole lot so I'm not going to tell it 
Well, what about that person in the corner that didn't go through all of those experiences, that person that was delivered from drugs, and they did all of this, you know, God delivered them. Oh, that's a great testimony. And you think, well, I didn't go through that, so my testimony's not. But what about that person in the back that didn't go through that either, and they're thinking, oh, well, I don't have anything to offer. That testimony of that person that gets up and says, you know, God was able to keep me, and I was able to serve him, and it was hard, but I served him for so many years. You know, that every experience is different. So every testimony matters because your experience will minister to those who are going through what you've been through. Your experience will minister to what though it builds faith in those who are going through different circumstances. Um, I've heard it taught once and I've kind of repeated it a few times because I thought it was really good that, you know, the Bible calls Jesus the balm of Gilead. And when you break that down, a balm is a healing agent and Gilead was a place of rule. And so the things that you've been healed from are the things you're going to have dominion in. It's the things you're going to have rule over. So you've been delivered. You've been healed of drug addiction. So you have dominion. Why? Because you have faith for it. You know God can do it. So that faith can stir faith in somebody else that says, right, you can come out of this. I know you can. We're going to bring you out. We're going to pray for you. We're going to believe God. Your faith can stir their faith because they've experienced. Now, God can use me, for example, maybe in healing because God's brought me from the deathbed. I have faith for healing because I know he's done it because I've experienced it. So he might send me to somebody who's sick. And where I may have dominion there, you may not because maybe your faith isn't built there because you haven't experienced it. So whatever it is he's brought you out of is what he's going to cause you to have dominion over. You're going to have authority over the enemy in that area because you're going to have a greater faith in that area. So So today, my friend, I would encourage you to share your testimony and believe having their faith stirred by the reality of what God has done for you. So I would encourage you to leave in the comment section under this podcast video a testimony, something that God has done for you, how he brought you to salvation, the things he's brought you through, something he's done, a healing, a deliverance, an answered prayer, a blessing. Share what the power of God's grace has manifested in your life that others might read and have their faith stirred and come to believe. And I would encourage you more than that to make a commitment to go out today and share your testimony with somebody because that is what will lead others into the faith. We are saved by the blood of the lamb. Jesus has already done the work. The price has been paid. But what they're reading on that page doesn't come alive to them until you prove the validity of it with your testimony. And in that is the enemy overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And because they love not their lives unto the death, you've got to be willing to share it. Share it today. Share it with someone. Go out and find someone to give the good news of what Jesus did for you. Lord, we pray that you would make us a witness. Lord, we pray for boldness in the spirit. God, we pray that you would put the right person before us. Cause us to cross paths. Lord, we are saying here we are. Use us. Make us a witness. Lord, you have done so many miraculous things in everybody's life. Lord, you saved me. You changed me. You set my feet to dancing. Lord, you healed me. You delivered me. You comforted me when I was broken. Lord, in all of those situations, there is something that I can share with somebody. So God, we are praying and I pray that each person individually would pray this. Lord, put someone before me today and show me who it is that I can encourage in the faith by sharing exactly what you did that proved the power of your grace through me, to me, in my life. God, make me a witness of the power of the blood and name of Jesus Christ.